I'm sure. I want to go back to the story of this. Uh, what wrestler was it was standing there concussed? Our great close personal friend of the show, Dan McDevitt. He wrestled under the name Corporal Punishment. Okay. And, and Dan works in Maryland Championship Wrestling now? Yeah. He's been like every every time you and I have been to Jimmy St. Famous Seafood, he was there helping us run everything. And you would oh. know him if you saw him. Okay. Well, Dan, I, I just wanted to warn Dan of something. When you run Maryland Championship Wrestling, Watch out for Chris Cruz because he will report you to the athletic commission. He'll get you. Be very wary of that guy. He's so dangerous. Well, they don't, nobody does shit like that anymore. Look at this big Sal Graziano. That's Matt Coon. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that, but that was Matt's first foray into wrestling. Ooh, Matt's gained weight since then. And he, he picked up a uh, guitar since then. Right. I mean, it's just business. I don't think a lot of people know that Sally Graziano will go on to be Matt Coon. Once ECW closed, poor old Sal needed to figure out a new way to make a living. So he started teaching kids to lip sync in Mechanicsville, Virginia. And the rest of it is Virginia legend. And the good thing about Matt Coon is when he plays a guitar, he has a place to rest it. Sure. Right there, right there, as Sal would say. And here comes Danny Doring, also a listener to the show. Shout out to Danny. Oh, Amish Roadkill, not so much. I don't think they have podcasts in the Amish community yet. They might. Probably in the Amish community, they have someone in like a city. Transcribe a podcast, write it down on paper and pencil, and then bring it to them so they can read it by candlelight. What's that thing when Amish kids get to like leave the Amish community and go into the real world and they just like get drunk and fuck and watch TV and just go crazy for a little while and then have to decide, you know, stay or come back. What's that thing called? Um, butt fucking by moonlight. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't right. sure. But they, they go on like leave or something. Rum yeah, Springer. Right. There you go. I knew that What's was a phrase for that. Rum Springer. Rum Springer? Yeah. Rum Springer? Is that what they did on? It's a rite of passage during adolescence. So in other words, you can go out at, you can go out and, and fuck as much as you want. Well, no, they don't say it like that, but it's just, you know, you, they have a, a much, um, they're just saying, Hey, you can do other stuff. Like you can wear different clothes and you can, you know, not be with a horse drawn buggy. You can get in a car, you can watch TV. And, but a lot of kids are like, well, Hey, I'm not, I'm not home anymore. Let's see what this booze is about. Oh my God. And cooter, you know, it's like, they just go nuts. Hmm. That's the rumor in innuendo. I mean, fuck, I'm not Amish. Mm, well, not that we know, but you got that big beard. I don't have a big beard. You, oh, you got a big beard. No, my, well, no, no. Okay. Okay. You, you got a big head and that makes the beard look big. By the way, speaking of big heads, are you going to have the big head when you come to uh, stand up live here in Huntsville on February 5th at supershowlive.com? I think our listeners by now know that AEW is coming to Huntsville. And that means you and Jim Ross are going to be live on stage at stand up live right after the show. And, uh, the VBC and stand up live are literally two red lights apart. So it should be a good time to go to the arena and then come on down and, and, and check you and Jr out. And I've already told, uh, the comedy club, we need pear, we need pear vodka and we need ginger beer. Right. We need some copper mugs and they're all ready. I think it's going to be Moscow mule city. It really is. Uh, but I, I do need to say, and I, boy, I, I'm really excited about being in Huntsville. I'm very excited about being a stand up live because as you know, I've seen a number of shows there. Sure. Each one of a like, it's a good, it's a great club. It's well done. But, but here's a, but I don't think I'm going to be able to drink that night. Mm. Well, JR and I, the next day are flying to the UK. 
Yeah, see, so. and I and I'm that night after it's the show's over. I'm driving to Atlanta right as soon as the show's over. DDP yoga, uh, to get a little workout in, and then I'm going to do my work uh, for AEW Dark the next day because we work down on Thursday. So that's why I don't think I can drink. Oh, but dude. I'm going to have a good time. You I'll should, have a uh, you should go make home sure the next that we day. have the. Uh, and I know you you have them in Huntsville. Make sure we have my favorite drink, Mellow Yellow Zero. Yeah, we do. Ooh. I'll have and Diamond we, bring them by. Yeah, and put a lime in it. Make sure, and people will think I'm drinking. There you go. But I look forward to it. Oh, so let's talk about Christmas again. I forgot about this. Oh, yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody, by the way. I gave the best Christmas present ever to this young guy at my mall. Oh, yeah, right. Got him some Plan B. What? Some Plan B. Plan B. Yep. Okay. Not knowing what plan B is, I'm, I'm go ahead. You're out, of loop. You're out of the loop on this. Yeah. It's a form of birth control. Wait a minute. You gave a guy a form of birth control. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. let me guess. He's never had pussy in his life. No, no. He's, he's, he's doing it the most right now. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So I figure he's got free shots on goal now. Merry Christmas. Oh, I see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fucking around, Tony. That's not a real gift. You, you, you got to get that prescribed. I'm just trying to make you laugh and you know, sold it. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, I, but I, I did, I did a Google of plan B. Oh, don't do, you better clear your fucking browser history. You're going to be in trouble. Oh yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> you know, you got no reason to explain that. Like, <laughs> yeah, Conrad told me to Google it. That was, that's my explanation. And, and at the house, you know, she'll say, yeah, I get it. You fuckers. Hey, Maybe so since we're though. talking about Christmas presents, do you, does one stick out to you? What was your favorite Christmas present you ever got? That I ever got? Yeah. It was, it was a uh, football game called, uh, Pro Bowl live action football. It was this thing where you would, it had this, uh, this mat that you would, you had to have a big room for it, a big mat that looked like a football field. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. This is from 1969. Yeah. And the, the, the running back, you would wind up the running back and you would, the guys with the linebackers would be on wheels and you would tackle them. I've, I've, uh, I found a, uh, a version of it online a couple of years ago and I've got it now. I rebought it. My favorite gift of all time. My most memorable gift, man. That's cool. Yeah. And you know what? It, it's, it's in that 10 year period for me. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. It's 69, 79. That would be my 10 year period. Of course, would be. of course, for you, one of them, 69. <laughs> no, that I'd say that. That checks out. <clears throat> no, uh, I say that because the 1969 World Series is what I remember sports-wise most of all. My, my greatest year of sports was 1973. And there it was. Of course, you don't remember those years. I'm sure your father does. No, I don't remember it because I was negative eight. I was born in 81. <laughs> How can I remember 73? Yeah. Was your, was, uh, was Larry Thompson a big sports fan growing up? Oh, huge. Specifically football, big mm -hmm. Cowboys fan. Uh, wh whoa. Really? Well, you got to remember in rural Alabama that we were three channel Jones. Right. So in rural Alabama, back in my dad's day, you know, there was only one team that was on TV every week and that was the Cowboys. And that's how they became America's team. Not because America was a bunch of sellouts for Emmett Smith and his shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was because they were on TV all the time. So if dad wanted to watch football, when it came to, you know, the NFL, there was one team pretty consistently on in rural Alabama. Right. Wasn't the Falcons on on a consistent basis in rural Alabama? No. Really? Because I lived in rural Virginia and the Redskins were on all the time. You know, they were kind of like the team. 
Well, so that's here's the thing too, that, I mean, go ahead. The Falcons fucking suck, dude. Oh boy. Oh boy. Are you right? And they've sucked forever. Oh boy. They even took sucking to a new level in the Super Bowl, didn't they? And how about this? The Cowboys were around longer than the Falcons. So I'm just mm. imagining when I was a kid, you know, it'd be like, no, be I, like, listen, it'd be like I, if I, your favorite team was the Jaguars, you know, like they're which, an expansion team. No, they're not anymore. Uh, as, as well, the, the Dallas Cowboys were an expansion team. The Falcons were an expansion team. Jaguars are my favorite team, by the well, way. Oh, I, I knew that. <laughs> well, who was your favorite Jaguar growing up? Uh, Mark Brunel. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for just having something ready for me. Just boom. <laughs> what about this motherfucker? You're going to trip me up. Matter of fact, I went to see the Jaguars and the fucking sucking Falcons uh, this past weekend. How was it? Holy shit. That's a big guy getting on that top rope there. Is it wrong that I, I still think of whenever I think of like most famous Jags, I think of Fred Taylor pretty much exclusively. No, that's <laughs> probably not, probably not wrong. No, I'm not saying that to be dismissive. I'm just saying like, he's, uh, I mean, well, he got the, he's probably had the most press. Yeah. When, when you say so, yeah. And that's why. And as we've discovered here on the show, and I don't know some of our listeners, you know, sort of bounce around, but as a reminder, you should let everybody know, cause we, we, we talked about this recently, who helped broker the deal for the con family to purchase the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fred Taylor, Butch Reed. Come on, man. Oh, of course. Jesus. Hashtag Butch Reed facts. We've just recently discovered old billionaire, Butch. One of the founders of Netflix. Hey, true story. Last week we're in catering AEW mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of us sitting at the table. I don't know who said this. Someone said, this is a true story. I'm glad you brought it up. Someone said, what's the deal with Butch Reed in your <laughs> podcast? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and someone said, I don't know. I think, I think JR asked me what's the deal with Butch reading your podcast. And someone said without missing his truck, he's over in Florida. <laughs> 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 and so we had a discussion about Butch reading about, you know, how good a worker he was at one time during the day. And JR told us a story about, uh, you know, junkyard dog, you know, up in Levy mid South and brick house Brown and JR has got millions of stories, but <laughs> I was wondering, what's the deal about Butch Reed and your podcast without losing, without a beat? No, he's over in Florida. God. So there you go. We keep Butch Reed alive. Dude, Butch Reed is the man. And yeah, I don't know that a lot of people know this, but Butch Reed was like the, uh, you know, the silent partner in ECW. <laughs> Seriously. We gotta, we gotta get, when, when's your next star cast? I don't know. I got to check in with Butch Reed. <laughs> is it? Wait, we haven't talked about that. Butch Reed is the founder of Starcast, not me. I'm just the front man. Butch Reed's too busy with Netflix business, you know. Yeah. The next, the next Starcast, you ought to have make have Butch Reed come, and here's here's all he would do: put him in a suit with a clipboard and a pencil in the back of his ear, and just walk around. We should mention right now, you can go to lowestrules.com and pick up not one, but two Butch Reed shirts. One of them has the blonde hair and the blonde mustache and across the headband that says hashtag Butch Reed facts. Uh, and the other has the shape of the state of Florida and it says Butch Reed was over in insert shape. Also in honor of your son. We've got a Shivani IPA shirt, which I'm sure mm -hmm. is going to be a big hit in your family. Yes. Except for the jobber, mm. uh, but the jobber, we can get him this shirt. You might be a dumbass if mm. we recently established that Dave Penzer 
great close personal friend of the show might be a Twitter dumbass. Mm, is a Twitter dumbass. Mm. So these guys are the tag team champions now, right? Do they win it? Yep. And, uh, I think they still have these belts now. Well, roadkill sold his, but Doring still has his, he won't come off it. I offered him money. He just won't let it go. Plan. Tom Ziggs a good looking man. Quandike Bill, make a chair. Tommy, come over here. 